This is exactly why I replaced my fuel filter early. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to replace yours the correct way following the GM service procedure. Super easy, super quick, not very expensive. Save your money, do it yourself. Let's do this. Tools needed 36 millimeter socket. You're going to need a 3 8 ratchet if that's what your socket is for. Some sockets are half inch, so make sure you get the right one. So just a, a ratchet to work with your socket. I use a small extension just because it helps me bring it down a little bit. You don't have to use this. And then I have a T40 Torx bit here, and this is for draining. So it's up to you if you want to use that for that step, or you can skip that step. It's up to you. All right, so the parts needed are real basic. All you need is just this fuel filter right here. This came from Amazon. Don't buy anything else but the factory GM parts. And that's this part number. So they're readily available as of this time and uh, always have been. It's the same as the 6.6 Duramax. Uh, so they're, they're out there. But what you're gonna get is this fuel filter right here. Has O-rings on it already and then it comes with a bag of O-rings. So the larger one is gonna go to your fuel water separator reservoir. It's gonna go on that, it's basically the cap. And then the smaller one is gonna go into the pipe inside the fuel filter housing. That's it. It's real basic on parts. Let's get to it. All right, what you need to do is clean off the housing first because you don't want any of this dirt falling in there. I know it's a small chance, but it's a chance we don't want to take. So I have a drain bucket underneath it. That's it. And now we can simply start the drain. This is the T40 Torx. All right, so here it is all spread out. We got our cap here. I sprayed this out with brake cleaner and then I wiped it out so there's no debris left in there. You're gonna wanna take the O-ring from the kit, roll that on. And here's where it's kind of important that you cleaned off the outside of it beforehand because now you've got dirt and everything on your fingers and you don't wanna be spreading that all over the place. So I'm happy that that's clean now. So here's the new fuel filter in comparison to the old fuel filter. Quite dirty, there it is again. So what we wanna do is we wanna pop this into the cap. That's it. This is good to go.
All right, so the GM way of fuel system priming goes as follows. You want to turn the key on. So I'm going to go ahead and push. I'm going to hold this button down. It's the start, the start button. You can hear the pump priming right now. And they want you to let it go for two minutes. Ignore my service tire monitor. So in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and reset the fuel filter life. You can hear this thing going crazy. All right, we will now power it down. And now we will attempt to start the truck. I can hear the pump running again right now. All right, some things to note while the engine is running right now. In my case, it fired right up. If yours does not start right up, then double check it for leaks down below when the pump is running. If you have any leaks at your sealer or anything like that, then obviously you're going to need to address that. Besides that, you can turn it off, and then you can hold the button down again to give it another cycle of the fuel filter, or the fuel pump to flow through the fuel filter. If it's running, but it's running a little rough or lacks power or something like that, immediately after starting it, then you can go ahead and rev it a little bit. And that will force the fuel through the fuel system and purge all the air out. This is what GM recommends. This isn't just me throwing it out there, my wild opinion, but this is exactly what the GM procedure says.